So I am interested in um, attachment theory myself. Yeah. And uh, of course, attachment theories emphasize the fact that our early formation uh, in relationship with our caregiver, our parent, um, really does kind of make such an imprint that it affects all future relationships, including our relationship with God. That our relationship with God initially is a kind of echo of whatever uh, our experience of relationships were early on, which means that you know, we can sometimes have a distorted view of God if we had an um, inadequate yeah. caregiving. And I want to ask a little bit about that because I do have a theorist, uh, a friend of mine, attachment theorist in psychology, who says that basically we have to be loved into loving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we love because God first loved us. Yes. And so I want to ask a little bit about, uh, si since you're such a strong advocate of repeated practices, sometimes I hear that, well, God's kind of in the deep background of a practice. You know, we're doing the practice of prayer or the practice of confession. Yeah. And, you know, he's working on us kind of unaware. And, you know, we have good days and bad days, days we feel close to him, he didn't feel so close. But where for you is kind of the existential, relational, kind of psalmist-like interaction with God amid the practices? Uh, which practices kind of help us really attach to God relationally, not just as a kind of, merely as a kind of habit of practice? And, um, and where is this place for this kind of um, yeah. deep interaction with the person of God in immediacy, in relationship, amid yeah. these repeated practices? That's a great question. I mean, um, I, I want to say almost any of those practices will at different moments be thin places in nice. which the Father is met in the Son in ways that will um, take me by surprise, you know? So, yeah, I don't want us to paint a picture of sort of liturgical practices, Christian worship practices, where we're just sort of going through the motions and God is kind of elsewhere. I, I, it's funny, um, to give an example, so in my tradition, um, worship always ends with a benediction, where we are sent from worship now to take up our image-bearing task in culture. And it's a charge, but it's also a blessing. Right? And so, and the pastor will raise his or her hands and, and bless us. And um, uh, I'm, I'm interested in the attachment theory because I come from actually a really messed up family mm -hmm. and, and have, have never known the love of a father. Mm -hmm. And um, what I do is whenever the benediction is offered, I hold out my hands to receive it because that's the only father who has ever said, I bless you. And um, for me, I, I think some people might look at that as like this really formal liturgical thing. For me, that is a thin place. You huh. know, that's, that's, a, that's an experience and is of there a intimacy. Is there a conversation that even takes place at that moment sometimes with you? Like you, oh, you hold out your hand oh, and it's kind of like, yeah. uh, Lord, I need you. I mean, what is the... Abs yeah, I mean, and I, I suppose probably it makes a difference. I, I almost enter these liturgical practices differently probably because my affections were also cultivated by charismatic sure. experience, oh, right. Sure. right? And so there's a, it's just that it breeds a sense of intimacy. I bet that's not true of everyone. You know, maybe if somebody was a kind of cradle Lutheran and all they've ever done is gone through these, these rhythms, they might not experience the intimacy in the same way that I'm looking yeah, for yeah, there yeah. because of those other past experiences. Yeah, right. It's funny, I mean, also, it, it might be really weird, but for me, the regular ritual of confession and assurance of pardon is, uh, for me, um, a deeply intimate meeting of a father who um, I have to be honest with and who says, I forgive you mm -hmm. every God single time. God is right there. Time. Yeah. He's right there. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think one of the things, it, it, you're on, this is a really great question, and, and it, I don't have all the answers to it because I but I think it's worth thinking about more because I think culturally we've absorbed certain standard tropes of intimacy or certain repertoires uh -huh. of in intimacy and therefore we, we foster certain kinds of worship experiences that we think breed intimacy. And I think we might not realize that int intimacy will look different for different people, uh -huh. um, if, that, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and you know, a couple times in your conversation, you use the example of, of laying the hands out. Yeah, and I just want you to take a moment to talk about how is confessing like this? Oh yeah, different from yeah, or, or the benediction was the example. Yes, how is the benediction? Yeah, different for you. Yeah, and why from just kind of holding my hands down 
and putting my hands out. So now we're using the body. Yes. Uh, why is that important? And why does it make sense that there's a bodily practice that ought to be, in some cases, uh, connected to this relational or liturgical? I, I think practice? it's a. It's um, again, it's a psalmist intuition here, right? Mm -hmm. That that we are ensouled bodies and embodied souls, and we we are. Um, uh, th there's something spiritually that happens in the posture of my body because I am my body. Do you know what I mean? I'm not just a soul trucking around in this vehicle. I am also my body. You're not a ghost in the machine only. No, exactly. And so for me, this is, uh, um, this is a tangible holistic expression of a posture that I'm also trying to cultivate spiritually. But I'll also be honest, you know what? There's lots of Sundays I don't feel like doing this. It's not expressive. Do you know what I mean? It's not, oh, oh, I'm, I'm doing this to show that I'm open to the Father. Sometimes I'm doing it to try to make myself open so to the Father. So this is one of your practices. Yeah, it, and, and the body leads the spirit in a way in this regard. Mm -hmm. you, 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 um, it's a little bit like belonging before believing. Yes. It's acting <laughs> before I'm, I'm uh, um, there spiritually So sometimes. it's acting as if, and yet I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, and yet this is the Holy Spirit's life in him. Sure. This is the, the Trinity has I come and so. made yeah. his home in you. And therefore, it, it makes a difference yeah. in what you right. do. Right. The same reason why, you know what, some days I don't feel like raising my hands in praise. But the Bible commands it. And I, and I get it. It's almost like your body can be ahead of the curve of mm -hmm. where your spirit needs to be. And so you practice your way into that posture.